This week on Moto Man, I'll drive a fully electric car that runs on hydrogen, and I'll meet a guy that'll look into his crystal ball and tell us about our automotive future. I'm a car guy that lives amongst tree-hugging, snooty hybrid drivers. They think I'm the Antichrist because I don't drive a car that gets 50 mpg. The funny thing is, the joke is on them. Because I don't drive a car that has two propulsion systems, has a raft of batteries that cannot be recycled, and has a price premium that cannot ever be recovered through the hope of higher mpg. Now bless my neighbor's hearts, because their heart is in the right place. The thing is, they're demonizing the wrong people. The problem is not the car companies. The problem is not even the cars. If you take pretty much any car company out there, they have the technology to build plug-in electric. They have the technology to build biodiesel. They even have the technology to build a hydrogen vehicle. The problem is lack of infrastructure. That's what needs to be changed. So. Being that we don't have this infrastructure, I wanted to find out for myself what would happen if I spend a week with a hydrogen power vehicle. Would it take me 85 hours to recharge the vehicle? Could I get from point A to point B like I normally do in a gasoline powered car? And most importantly, would I gain some credibility from my Puff the Magic Dragon loving neighbors? So let's spend some time and find out. We have been invited directly across from Los Angeles International Airport by General Motors to meet Shad Balch, the environmental and energy guru of General Motors. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Good to be here. So I understand you've got a cool little program that we are going to participate in for the next week. That's Tell right. us a little bit about it. We're standing in front of the Chevy Equinox fuel cell vehicle. Okay. And this vehicle is one of about a hundred that are on the roads right now in Los Angeles, okay. Washington DC, and New York. It's, uh, it's all part of the program that we call Project Driveway. Okay. And Project Driveway is basically the world's largest market test of fuel cell vehicles. And the goal of the program is to just really get feedback. Exactly. So what kind of feedback do you want from us? We're gonna drive the car for the next week. What kind of stuff do you want us looking out for you? Basically, we want to make sure that, that everything runs as expected. Okay. It's, um, it's a completely different vehicle, mm -hmm. but at the same so time- So you want to know how it works in the drive through of In-N-Out Burger? Definitely go through In-N-Out Burger. That's okay, the main thing. That's probably years. the first place I'm going to go. That's right. And I'm definitely going to try the carpool lane. That's probably the most yeah. valuable piece on the oh, car absolutely. right there. Absolutely. Yeah. I think I'm going to sell the bumper on eBay before I give it back to you. <laughs> we have the unique pleasure of being with GM's hydrogen guru, Alex Karras. Welcome to Moto Man. Appreciate it. Thanks. You have brought us a gift from the future. Could you tell us a little bit about what we got here? This vehicle actually uses hydrogen to create electricity to actually power the wheels. So it's an electric vehicle. Pure electric vehicle. But it's powered by hydrogen. Powered by hydrogen. So there's hydrogen. no wire that comes out of this thing and plugs it into a wall. No plugging in. It doesn't in. have a gas engine that flips between the two. Nope. So can you show us any of this in the car? Uh, to a certain degree. So under the We're hood. seeing underneath the skirt of the Chevrolet Equinox fuel cell vehicle. We obviously dress it up when we uh, we take her out. Obviously. <laughs> Indeed. Well, you so, don't want her panties showing. I can understand that. This is the bell of the ball. No dirty underwear. Be no <laughs> dirty underwear. <laughs> bell of the environmental ball, shall we say. On top here is actually our power management center. Okay. This is the brains of the system. Manages so this is that like power. the computer that manages the whole thing. Effectively, okay. yes. Okay. And so that basically takes the power center to okay. wherever it needs to go. So this little thing here, that whole thing is the fuel cell. Yeah, about as wide as this is, okay. and about a couple feet in. And what we do is we do you realize the decals on the car are bigger than the fuel cell itself. <laughs> indeed. That's indeed. good marketing. So it starts as hydrogen, goes through the process through the platinum and the air, drives the engine, and then it spit out the back as water. Indeed. Perfect. What the hell of a process you got there? Very simple. 
you truly have your own renewable energy source and it has four wheels. If you have water, you can create elect uh, hydrogen out of water, put it in this vehicle, out the tailpipe's water. It's a completely renewable pathway. Okay, Shad, so we're now inside the Equinox fuel cell vehicle, and the first thing I notice is it looks very much like an Equinox on the inside, although the build quality is significantly better. That's right. Well, these Equinoxes are, are hand-built, and they're not on our production line. Okay, I get it now. So you can definitely see some it's of the... nice of the, on the inside. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And then this display that we're looking at here is actually a real-time illustration about what's going on underneath the car. Okay. So you can see... It looks like something from, like, a video game. It is. It's it a little like space invader-ish. Right, right. We just need the sounds now. Yeah, you need the sound effects to go with it. That, yeah. That's the one. You want feedback? That's my feedback so far. But basically what we're looking at is you can see the three tanks and the green dots represent the hydrogen that's being carried from the rear of the vehicle up to the front. Okay, so Alex, I'm looking at a very odd looking fuel pump. So give me an idea of what's going on here. So in much the same way we inflate tires where we okay. actually clasp down, this actually uh, fueling nozzle clasps down to the vehicle receptacle. So, okay. and another neat thing that's happening is actually, you can see here there's actually an infrared receiver. This little pad back here is an infrared transmitter. Think, I was actually very impressed with a friend of mine. They redid their house and they got a sink that has a light in the nozzle. This is even cooler. Indeed. And yeah. what we do is actually the vehicle and the station can talk to one another, if you will, and it communicates pressure and temperature. So why would you need to communicate those back and forth from the pump to the Faster car? Faster fill, okay. fuller fill. You lock it down, press go, starts filling. About three minutes later, we have a full tank of about four kilograms of hydrogen. So what does that translate to for the slow people? Think of it, a kilogram of hydrogen as a gallon of gasoline equivalent. So roughly we put four gallons. Four gallons in this vehicle. So that's, if I'm using my abacus correctly, Yes. that's where we get the 50 mpg. 50 mpg go about 200 miles total range in this vehicle. So could one theoretically put in a bigger tank in a vehicle oh, and make easily. this thing go farther? Easily. Actually, GM already has. We have two drivable concept cars called the Sequel that actually has gotten over 300 miles. I think all around 350 miles in terms of range. So unlike other gas pumps, you have to quit out of the computer, but once you do that, you can hop in your vehicle and get going. So let's put some more hydrogen miles on the car. You would think it's an electric car. Effectively, it's an electric car. Overpriced golf cart. But from like zero to 30, or from like 20 to 40, this thing has a lot of scoot. You hit the gas, or the electric, whatever you want to call it, and it goes. After about 50, that's when it starts to peter out. Sound. That is the question. I know when I'm driving like an Aston Martin or a Ferrari, or even a Lamborghini, you get excited by the sound. Anybody asks, what's the downside of driving a vehicle like this? It's definitely the sound. I would highly, highly, highly suggest if you purchase one of these, make sure you check off the premium sound option. So you're talking about storing energy and then comparing it to other technologies. How does this compare to say a plug-in electric or comparison to say like a, a, a biodiesel? These technologies, in my opinion and mm -hmm. our opinion, are complementary technologies, right? A plug-in is a very efficient use of electricity. So I should look at this as replacing an electric car, I should look at it as a complementary technology, say plug-in electrics yeah. or very efficient gasoline or very efficient diesel. Exactly. So what would it take to create an infrastructure to support vehicles like this? What do we need? Here's what I say we need. There's four, four groups. Okay, this is what we need. This is a wish list four. according to Alex Karras. Yeah. If we don't have government support mm -hmm. in, in both resources, funding, money, yeah. and, and uh, backing, mm -hmm. you're not going to go anywhere. Number two, we need people like me mm -hmm. to go out and say, hey, you know what? This mm -hmm. makes sense. Here's why it makes sense. Help manage yeah. really the conversation. Number three, you. Thanks. Frankly speaking. They're drafting me now. <laughs> yes, I am drafting you. We need the word out. Mm -hmm. We need to tell people this is not that much different and yeah. it's doable. Consumers need to demand it. Mm -hmm. If there is not a market out there mm -hmm. for a fuel cell vehicle, yeah. why would we build one? So in summing it all up, the technology exists to make this thing a usable product that people would understand just like the normal car today. Yep. And if I got this correct, we can actually expect to see some sort of infrastructure that 
isn't like the, the Antichrist according to the tree huggers that supplies hydrogen, no. correct? If you take the top 100 biggest cities, mm -hmm. you put in essentially a station every couple miles within mm -hmm. those cities, mm -hmm. right? Top 100 cities, yeah. station every mile. And then in between those, every yeah. 25 miles on the highway, that's 12,000 stations. Okay. That's one tenth of, the, it, less than one tenth of what's out there already. Okay. And, and that really paints another picture. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not, it's not this cumbersome solution that we just can't solve. After a week with a hydrogen-powered car, I'd love to be able to report to you and my tree-hugging neighbors that there was some epiphany that I found. But the thing is, there wasn't. It does everything your normal gasoline-powered car does today. The infrastructure is the problem. Even a big city like Los Angeles, I only had two choices in which to refuel this vehicle. But that I really can't even blame GM for because they're not in the business of creating and transporting energy. That is what needs to change. And as our good friend Alex told us, hydrogen really is only one solution. It sits alongside plug-in electric, biodiesel, gasoline cars that can run more efficiently than the ones we have today. All of them are like the utopian solution that everybody's looking for. Again, we all want the same thing. We want Mother Earth to be there. The thing is, don't buy into the hype. Be the solution. Now, not only has he got an MBA, not only has he basically put a fuel cell vehicle on the map here in LA, but the guy has good taste in food. And his father has a 1971 Corvette. Yeah. And actually, he shipped it across the United States. So did States you decide to do the green theme by not going with a double wide? <laughs> Alex Karos, who is the senior project engineer for hydrogen infrastructure for General Motors. Did you make up that name yourself or did you buy it by the pound? <laughs> hi ho, hi ho, it's off to hydrogen I go. And I'll give you some, uh, some opinions towards the end of the week. Right, don't be shy. <laughs> That's a problem for me not to be shy. <laughs> Shall I check the oil and do so the windshield my for you? I was just gonna say yeah. dry, oh you uh, <laughs> You do as a matter of fact. And, and because it's hydrogen and we're in LA, I want at least five bucks. <laughs>